Hello grade 9, today's lesson is about the Indo-Europeans. So the Indo-Europeans are people where, where a group of people from the steppes of dry grassland that stretched north of the Caucasus, a mountainous area in between the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea. So the Indo-Europeans lived in tribes that spoke forms of language that we call Indo-European. So the Indo-European language family, the languages of the Indo-Europeans were the ancestors of many of the modern languages of Europe and Southwest Asia and South Asia. English, Spanish, Persian, and Hindi all trace their origin back to different forms of the original Indo-European language. So all the languages that we have now is extracted from the Indo-European language. Unexplained migration. So the until now, the historians didn't know why these people left their homelands in the steppes and whatever the reason, the Indo-European nomads began to migrate outward in all directions between 1700 and 1200 BC. These migrations or movements of a people from one region to another happened in waves over a long period of time. Not suddenly they, uh, they migrate, they migrate over a long period of time. The Hittite Empire, about 2000 BC, one group of Indo-European speakers, the Hittites, occupied Anatolia, also called as Asia Minor. Anatolia is a huge pen, uh, peninsula uh, in modern day Turkey. Anatolia is a high rocky plateau, rich in agriculture. Separate Hittite uh, city-states came together to form an empire there in about 1650 BC. The city of Hattuts uh, was its capital. The Hittite Empire went on, uh, on to dominate Southwest Asia for 450 years. Hittites occupied Babylon. Uh, the, the chief city is Tigris and Euphrates Valley, and they struggled with Egypt for control of the northern Syria. Neither the Hittites nor the Egyptians were able to get the upper hand. So the two people, uh, ended their conflicts by signing a peace treaty. Such they such pledged the uh, to help the other fight of future invaders. So how they adopt and adapt this is what we will speak about right now. The Hittites use their own Indo-European language with one another. So be, between uh, between their uh, between each other they use the Indo-European language. However, for international use, they adopted the Akkadian, the language of the Babylonians that they had conquered. So they used the adopted they adopted the language of Babylonians they had conquered. The Hittites borrowed ideas about literature, art, politics, and law from the Mesopotamians. After that, they used the chariots and the iron technology. The Hittites excelled in the technology of war. The Hittite chariot proved itself a superb fighting machine. The Hittites used the iron in their chariots and they owed many of their military victory, victories to the skill of their iron workers and they made a powerful chariots and powerful weapons that made them uh, win many of their uh, attacks. Around 1500 BC, the Hittites were the first Southwest Asia to work with iron and harden it into weapons of war. So they, as the picture you see here, you can see here the chariots and the iron weapons and how they use the, as the Assyrian, uh, the Hittites also were used, experts in using the chariots and experts in the warfare. After that, despite its military might, the powerful Hittite empire fell quite suddenly around the year 1190 BC. As part of a great wave of invasion, tribes attacked from the north and burned the Hittite capital city. Then we speak about another group, which is the Aryans. So, number one is the Hittites, a group of Indo-Europeans. Number two, the Aryans, another Indo-European group, the Aryans, who, who, whose homeland was between the Caspian and the Aral Seas crossed over the northwest mountains, passes into the Indus River Valley of India. A caste system develops, so how it develops, the Aryan fought their enemies, a people called Dasis. The Aryan differed from the Dasis in many ways. Let's mention how these ways are. So number one, Aryans were taller, lighter in skin, and spoke a different language. Unlike the Aryan inhabitants of the Indus Valley, the Aryans had not developed a writing system. Can you remember the Indus Valley, the Harpen culture? They already have a writing system, which is consisted of 400 uh, 
symbol. So they were up also a pastoral people. The Dasas, on the other hand, were town dwellers who lived in communities protected by walls. Then the iron cassette system. So here the mouth included the pe uh, the pierced, um, and the teachers warrior and the arms uh, included warriors and rulers feet including laborers and peasants and legs included traders herders and farmers this is how this is the Aryan cassette system that's it thank you so much grade nine see you next time